Well, a happy finally Friday. The NCAA tournament for Gonzaga continues today as they take on the Purdue Boilermakers in the Sweet 16. The two teams met in an earlier season tournament in Hawaii back in November with Purdue coming out on top by 10. Gonzaga coach Mark Few says both teams are much different now than they were then. I, I think we're both different. I, I, I just I know in our case we're vastly different. Um, we had some whoo we had some pretty rough patches there early if you watched some of our practices and even some of our early games but uh, um, we actually played really really hard against them the first time uh, we just turned the ball over too much and shot way 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 too many uh, uh, threes uh, so I think hopefully we'll get that cleared up we're sharing it better and I think we got way we're much more purposeful on the offensive end um, but you know that they, they're 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 better too so uh, I think that'll be the the biggest challenge there. That game is underway right now on TBS. The Gonzaga women are also in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Women's Tournament. They'll play in Portland tonight against Texas. Coach Lisa Fortier says the Zags are going to face a very physical lineup in the Longhorns. We watched a lot of film on them and they're extremely physical. I think we're gonna have to match their physicality. They rebound the ball really well. Um, they're, they're so big out there. So it's you're, you're playing with three forwards at all times, at least. Um, so you're definitely gonna have to rebound. We're gonna have to get to our kind of our kind of shots, and I just think play our game. When we're having fun and playing how we play, um, we can compete with anybody. And if we're bogged down in the in the weeds and we're we're letting little things bother us, like we're in the Sweet 16. These guys haven't ever got to do that. We're gonna enjoy the heck out of it and see if we can have fun with it while we are while we're doing it. Gonzaga and Texas tip at 7 tonight on ESPN. Meanwhile, Haley Van Liss LSU Tigers play tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock on ABC against UCLA. If they win and Iowa beats Colorado, it would be uh, feature LSU and Caitlin Clark in Iowa in the Elite Eight. How about that? Seattle Kraken overcame several dust-ups with the Ducks last night and beat Anaheim 4-2 in NHL play. Seattle got the uh, on the board first after a scoreless first period on a goal by Jaden Schwartz. Anaheim took the lead on two shorthanded tallies before the Kraken responded. Zegras right in. Across it goes a shot. Grubauer said no on Petrano. Wow, what a beautiful stop again. Grubies made three or four. Fowler. For the hack out in front on McCann. Two for slashing. Here's McCann to the goal line. Everly. Shot stop. He scores. Jaden Schwartz bangs it home. A good answer sequence here by Anaheim. Segris team pass. Petrano turned out by Grubauer. They have the game's only goal scored by Jaden Schwartz. Lundestrom right in. He scores. Short-handed goal. And Maddie Beneers. Oliver Bjorkstrand at the line is dogged by Pavel Minchikov. Comes out to center. Look out. Short-handed break in. Silverberg turned out. They score on the rebound. McCann now for Schultz. Murakovsky in control. With a shot. They score. <laughs> He'll spin, Borgen, a shot wide. Oleksiak is on the rebound. Yanni Gord to the slot. Kerchiak scores! Hey, hey, what do you say? Ty Kerchiak! Petrano's back, five on four. Conventional power play. McCann scores! Veneers out in front. McCann from downtown. It's a power. Veneers 4-2 Seattle five seconds left it's kicked along by Gord Schwartz will dump it all the way down time will expire that's cracking hockey baby Andre Burakovsky and coach Dave Haxtall admitted it wasn't their best game but happy to give the home fans a win no we st stuck with it and um, um just keep battle. I mean, I don't think it was uh, overall maybe our uh, strongest performance, but we it was a tough game. It was a lot of lot of power play and uh, um, not a whole lot of five on five for a lot of guys. So um, I mean, those games uh, they kind of um, 
mix up like the um, how do you say it? the like the chemistry and stuff on ice. Um, so I mean it was, it was good that we stuck with it and um, obviously PP uh, we let in two goals that we should absolutely not uh, do but we we came back big and and uh, that's what it's all about so we uh, huge two points and uh, uh, fun to win so well I guess it's how you answer and and they did you know our, our power play answered um, obviously you know to you know to give up the sloppy goals you know back to back that we did can be you know that can be catastrophic in a in a game um you know like, fortunate for us we had another opportunity coming and uh you know and those guys were able to capitalize uh, and get one back um you know but i thought you know probably the biggest you know, there's moments in games right i'm gonna you know, I'll peg three guys. I thought I thought Tan of Gordon Carts drug us back into this game. Seattle's back home tomorrow night against the Dallas Stars. Puck drops at seven o'clock. That'll be on Root Sports Northwest Plus. Opening night did not go the way the Mariner fans were hoping for last night at T-Mobile Park. Boston spoiled the night for a packed house and a 6-4 decision. Nelson Cruz threw out the first pitch and signed a one-day contract to retire as a Mariner. That's pretty cool. Mitch Hanniger and Dylan Moore went deep for Seattle, but Boston would win the night. Please welcome Mariner's great Nelson Cruz. Here to surprise Nelson and celebrate his recent retirement by catching the pitch, his friend and Mariners Hall of Famer, Felix Hernandez. Nice pitch, Nelson. Thanks, Felix, for being back. Here we go. Banniger. Bobby Vermitz, man. Golly. Great guy. Yeah, everybody was really excited that he came back to the club. He was, too. It's a one-run game. Yeah, I had a great spring. and That was a good swing he put on that one right there to drive it out the opposite field, especially on a cold night like tonight. Yeah. Dylan Moore pinch hits. Bats for Canzone. Out to center field. This is Cam. Well, he's somebody we know over the past few years that if he catches it, he's got a lot of pop in that bat. Kenley Jansen trying to lock it up. And the 0-2 to Luke Rayleigh. Swing and a miss, and the Red Sox win it on opening night. Manager Scott Service talked a lot about pitching after the ball game as Luis Castillo worked five innings to take the loss. Boston to Seattle play game two of the four-game set, 640 tonight on Root Sports Northwest. Checking the Les Schwab Prep baseball scoreboard from yesterday. Uh, Almira Cooley Hartline shut out OMAC. Quincy pummeled Waterville Mansfield 22 7. Lake Roosevelt better Bridgeport 7 zip. Brewster beat up Oroville 24 5. Manson edge Okanagan 3 2. Double headers on the schedule today, including Liberty Bell at Lake Roosevelt, Wenatchee at West Valley, and Moses Lake visiting Eisenhower. Tomorrow's schedule begins at 11 a.m. with Afreda at Sela. Cashmere hosts Chelan. OMAC at Cascade. Brewster welcomes Okanagan. Manson visits Bridgeport and Waterville Mansfield is at Riverside Christian. Tanaska takes on Clallam at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. East Valley swept a softball doubleheader from a Friday yesterday, 12-2 and 8-7. Tanaska topped to OMAC 8-6. Lake Roosevelt beat Bridgeport 21-5. It was Brewster over Oroville 22-4. Okanagan down Manson 18-3. Doubleheaders today featured Liberty Bell at Lake Roosevelt. Eastmont visiting Royal. Wampato hosting Quincy, Brewster takes on Tanaska, Wenatchee's hosting West Valley, Eisenhower visiting Moses Lake. Tomorrow's schedule has Chelan at Cashmere, Manson visits Bridgeport, Eastmont hosts Glacier Peak at noon, Clayelm travels to Okanagan, Moses Lake will play Glacier Peak at Eastmont's Sterling Fourplex. That'll be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, several tight affairs played out on the pitch yesterday as Grandview edged to Freda 1-0, Cashmere got by Chelan 2-1, Cascade down Quincy. 
Quincy 3-1. Bridgeport beat Pateras 4-0. It was Okanagan over Oroville 2-0. Tenasky top Liberty Bell 3-1. There's a limited schedule today with Wenatchee at Davis. Quincy visits Bush. Moses Lake plays at West Valley. Tomorrow finds Manson at Brewster at 11 a.m. while Chelan visits Lakeside Nine Mile Falls at noon. OMAC hosts Colville at 1 o'clock. The Wenatchee Wild play their first ever Western Hockey League playoff game tonight. Game one of the best of seven series between Wenatchee and Kelowna starts at 7 o'clock at the Town Toyota Center. Game two tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. The series will then shift to Kelowna for games three and four next Tuesday and Wednesday. You can go to WenatcheeWildHockey.com for tickets and more information. That's a look at sports news. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.